Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, they're here. And of course, I'm talking about these big guys right here. This is the Andy's Hobby Headquarters 16 scale Tiger One Early. They're done. And because they're done, that means they're on their way around the world for everybody who wants one. And what I'm gonna to do today is, today's gonna to be a build video. I know, something I haven't done much lately. But today I'm going to completely build this thing. Uh, I won't do the paint and weathering, and that is because I went a little bit more in depth on the build part of this video because of the speciality of this kit, and it's already about 35, 36 minutes long before I did this intro. So today's video will be strictly on the build. There will be a couple of minutes in the very beginning of the video, right after I'm done talking here, where I'll show the instructions and some of the new parts that got changed from the prototype, plus also the decals and like the, uh, the metal barrel, the wire for the track cables and the tow cables, things like that, little, little extra stuff that you'll get to see. It only lasts for a couple minutes and then it goes right into the build video itself there. So. I've got a lot to show you because this is a big kit and uh, I had a lot of fun building this and the fit is very, very good on this. So excited to share it with you. So let's get started. Before I get started with the actual build, I thought I would just take a, like a minute or two here and show you some of the updated sprues. Uh, when I first showed you the uh, the prototype, none of the texturing, like on the cast, the welds, all that kind of stuff, it was not on there yet. And so I thought I would show you like a couple of the sprues, let you see what I'm talking about here. So here we have the sprue with the, uh, the turret top and the mantlet, and hopefully you can see the texturing all on the the mantle here because that's a cast piece also you can see the ring of welds that go all around where the barrel will come out also you can see the welds that go all the way across the top of a turret there was also other corrections that were made on the kit that i'll kind of point out as we go through the actual build but those are the three mantlets that come inside and also since we're looking at, we also have the, the top of the hull and you can see the cast texture back there, as well as all of the welds that go all the way around on that there too. And I'll also show you a quick look at the finalized instructions. That way, if there's anything you wanna see as I'm building it, you can take a look at the instructions. You can just rewind back to this portion of it right here. And of course, if you want to, you can always freeze frame it to see a close up. Now, in the beginning of the instructions here, we have all of our color call outs. And that way you can choose which tank you're going to build before you actually uh, start the assembly, because there are some variations in the, uh, the parts. And this is the SO4 from the box art. This is probably the one that I'm going to build up here. And then so you choose the, uh, the vehicle you're going to build and then you jump right into it. Now in here we have the little breakdown of Andy's Hobby Headquarters, breakdown of the sprues. And then I am gonna let you look at the pictures of how the kit goes together. And the final page is the figure and some stuff that'll be coming up in the near future. 
And finally, I can show you some of the other parts that weren't completed at the time of the pre-production model. We have the finalized decals right here. And of course, all of those correspond to the markings that you saw in the beginning of the instruction manual. We have our tow cable, our track cable, and of course, the finalized, without trying to blind you guys there, uh, photo etch parts too, just like that. And of course, the metal barrel, that is included in it as well that has not changed from the pre-production so now that you've seen all of that stuff let's start the build here it is here's the lower hull and the very first step we need to do is we need to apply 16 of the uh, one half of the torsion bar lock and i'm going to show you up close here you see that little nub right there on the other side there's an another nub just like that and those are going to correspond to the two little indents that you see inside each one of those holes. So my advice is not to put cement on here right away. To get this in here, kind of put it in the place and then you'll be able to actually see when it seats, it kind of clicks. And when it seats properly right there, you'll have those two little dots there, kind of not perfectly straight. You don't want them perfectly straight because if you put this piece in, the suspension is not going to line up properly. So do not put glue until it actually seats and then you can apply a little bit of cement around the outside there and solidify it into place. Now on the other side, there is this little lock for the other side of the torsion bar and it has two little pins here and you can see the two little pin holes on this side. This is gonna get placed in there. Inside this lock, you can see that it is squared off in there, and that is because the other side of the torsion bar also is square, so it'll line up in there. And following these steps, I know I'm going a little bit in extra depth in there, but it's very, very important you get all these parts just right, or your suspension is gonna be weird. And it's, it's easy, you just gotta take your time and make sure everything is seating the actual way it's going to. Now, I've got 16 of these to put on and 16 of these to put on. So I'm going to get those on right now. There it is. That's what it looks like once all of the torsion bar locks are into place. Now we're going to actually work on the suspension arms. And this is where the arm is going to come. There is this little, little ejector, a mark here that you can just actually just flick with your finger, knock it out. That does need to be removed before the next piece goes in. And that is because we have to build the inside arm of this. Now you can just push it right into place, but the best way to do it is to actually come at it with this part first, and then it'll kind of click right into place there. And you'll have that all ready to go. And then you'll also notice inside here, hopefully we can get a nice, yeah, there we go. There is a little rectangle and that rectangle corresponds to the rectangle on the narrow part of the torsion bar. Here's the square that is going to plug in on the other side over here. So we need to go ahead and glue that into place. And you can, as you spin it, you're going to feel it just literally lock right in. And that creates the major most of your, uh, your suspension arm here. I got to do some cleanup and we've got the outer peg to put on, but I've built up a whole bunch of them already here. And all it's going to be a matter of doing is sliding it through and locking it in like that. And all of your suspension arms will be in the right position and will be workable. Now, when you go to glue it, don't glue it here. If you glue it here, your suspension is not going to work. You only want to glue it right as it enters into the other side of the lock over in here. And then you can see, hopefully you can see how that moves with the weight of the vehicle. So we'll have all of those to put in right now. I've started creating all of the uh, suspension arms and I'm gonna go ahead and put all of those in right now. I should also point out too, there is this little nub right on the part of the suspension arm where the, uh, the bar is gonna go through. Now, this is an option. You can keep this on and you can lock it into the, the pin right here and that'll lock your suspension. I'll kind of show you on this one since this one's not glue you can kind of lock it all the way down like that. I want this suspension to work, so I am gonna go ahead and cut each one of these little nubs off. That way it doesn't accidentally lock the suspension in, uh, you know, while the whole thing is built up and it'll be kind of tough to get it out of there. So just an option, but that's up to you how you wanna do it. 
Okay, I've gone ahead and now glued on the, the end of the suspension arm. This is the part where the wheel actually slides on. And I've got it flipped over right now because I have one side of the suspension drying. You'll notice that on this side of the suspension, the suspension all leans forward. On this side, the suspension will go in the opposite direction and the arms will flare back. Now, it's easier to put them in when it's flipped over, but I don't want to put any weight on here until they fully have set up inside there. Now, while I will let that fully dry, we can also go ahead and attach the front of the suspension. I'm going to put a little bit of extra cement on this because I want this big, heavy piece to make sure it does not come off. As you can see here, and here is that front panel that will get glued in just like this. And also, while we're letting that dry, we also have this rear part where the idler wheel will come out. There is a little pin here, and the weld has been put on all around the outside there. That is going to get glued into position right here on the back, just like that. So I'll put some glue on that, get that set up, and I will get all of the suspension arms glued into place right now. The suspension arms have now had a chance to dry overnight, so we have a nice springy suspension arm. Now we need to glue into place all of these other pieces here. So I need to put on this little set of bolts that'll go on the inside right in through here with a little cement. Also need to put the housing for the final drive. Very simple, that'll kind of just click right into place here, just like that with a little cement. And what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to show you how the, uh, the idler wheels are made up and if you make them properly they will spin so we need to take our housing here that actually bolts to the side of the tank this part right here will get glued in this first section right here if you want this to spin you will put this in there and not apply cement to the inner hub just put a little bit of cement on the outer hub right here and you'll push it into place and then the whole thing will be able to spin and what will happen is this final cover will go on the outside and seal it all together in a sandwich. There's a pin in there, and then this will spin on its axis. That way, it's a lot easier putting the tracks on and off. And remember, the tracks are fully workable, so we want to have both the drive sprocket as well as the idler fully spin to get it to do that. So let me get these little parts glued on, and then I will show you how the drive sprocket goes on a very similar way that you can put it on that it'll also continue to spin. Okay, here is the, the drive, or at least half of the drive sprocket put into place here. And you see there's a center pin that I just put a touch of cement on the inside, pushed it into place, didn't push it all the way down. I find that if you push it all the way down, uh, sometimes cement can ooze out of the, uh, the hole and fuse your drive sprocket into place. So just push it most of the way down. It's not gonna interfere with putting the outer part of the drive sprocket on. So you're good to go on that. Now, as for the idler wheel in the back, there are, there is, I should say, there is a, a little notch right here, and then there's a fairly wide opening. Uh, I am just gonna put that opening right down in the middle. Now, I am not going to attach this yet because there is the road wheels I have to mess with. And this last road wheel needs to go into place or you'll never get it on <laughs> with the drive sprocket in place. So keep an eye on that before you start gluing anything into place. Road wheels. There are 48 road wheels on a Tiger. The very first four are uh, are right here. Is this type of road wheel? It's going to go on and follow the instructions very carefully on that because you need to build them up in the proper order to get them all to fit into place here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all of the road wheels built up, and then I'll kind of just show you how it all stacks together there. And as you can also see too, I've built both sets of track, but I'm going to show you how the actual track goes together as well. So let me get all the road wheels built up and then I'll show you how they all stack up. Okay, I've been sanding road wheels for a very long time now and I thought I would just take a little break from that and then kind of show you how they all stack onto the side of the tank. Now, I still do have to take more of the seam out of most of these. I've been working on them. There are two halves to every road wheel, so there is going to be a seam down the middle. But uh, just for a little tip, all of the inside road wheels are not going to get seen at all. So if you don't want to take the seam out completely, I don't think anyone's ever going to know. So this is how the stacking process goes. So we have our first set of single road wheels. Then come the, the paired road wheels, just like this. And there'll be a little cap that goes inside there to let the, the wheels spin. 
And that is gonna be true with all of this part of the road wheel, is to be very, very careful with the instructions because there are, there's a little cap inside here too that if you want the wheels to spin, you have to be very, very careful applying the cement or you will be having a solid set of wheels, which some of you may not care about, so that's fine. Uh, and of course, we'll put the drive sprocket on here too, but that can go on anytime because it's not really in the way. Finally, we get that road wheel. And then just a couple more that will get stacked on here. And of course, I'm gonna glue all these, but I just wanna give you an idea how many road wheels there are. And you can see how they all line up right there. And it is a lot of road wheels. So I want, now that I've shown you this, I can actually go and finish sanding the other side and start to glue all of these into place as well as the either wheel. I'll also glue on right there. So I've got a lot more sanding to do. Oh, and also since I've, uh, this is one of the drive sprockets. The drive sprocket also is not affected by any of the road wheels. So you don't have to worry about there is a pin on here though, so it's got to line up for that, like that. And that's how the drive sprocket will go on. So let me go get all those other road wheels done and I'll come back and I'll show you how the tracks go on. Okay, let me show you how the tracks are in the kit. So here is the actual individual link of track, as you can see here. Now the guide horns are a separate piece and the guide horns are all on this sprue here as well as the track pins. So very simple to put these together. It's a matter of cutting them out. There is some push pin marks because there's gotta be some somewhere on here that need to be cleaned up, but those are pretty easy to take care of. Now, the way the instructions call out is that you will build like 10 pieces of track and then you can cut this whole little piece off here and glue all the guide horns at once. And yes, that does work. Uh, the only problem with that is, I find, is when you do it that way, it's kind of hard to clean up the edge of the guide horn. So it, it works. It works very well. Uh, but then you're spending a lot of time trying to get between the guide horn teeth, cleaning them. So I ended up, for all the tracks, just cutting them completely off here, taking my time, sanding them all, and dropping them into um, place later on. It takes maybe a couple seconds longer on each track, but it's a lot easier for cleanup later on. So... With that in mind now, oh, and also I should point out too, they are fully pinnable because they are workable. So once you get the two track links together, you take out your track pin, slide it in there. Boom, you've got workable track. Now, I'm gonna move all this to the side for one moment because here they are. I've already built up the set and have put them on both sides there. Now that that is all in place, as well as all of the uh, the road wheels. Now, none of the track are permanent. We can pull the pin out of them here and pull them off to paint them. But I just thought it looks kind of good in the way it is now. The only other thing I need to do in here in the front is to glue on this uh, track bracket. And you'll notice with the weird shape of the, uh, the end here, that is going to fit right around in here. Maybe you can see up inside there. We'll go ahead and glue this into place. And then I've also started to create an extra set of track to drop in the front, just like that. There where the spares go. Okay, now we can start assembling the rest of the, uh, the hull. So we have our glasses plate here and we need to assemble the ball for the machine gun. And the way it goes in here too, it is fully movable because we're not going to put any cement on here, but it's done in a way having that little pin stick out that it can't rotate side to side. So it locks it in the proper position. We have the inside and you see the pegs and holes. We're going to glue all those up together to get this sandwiched effect here. And we'll of course glue all these front vision block parts on. And then for the sides where the sponsons are, we have an inside and an outside and you see the holes and pins and it's just a matter of gluing those in just like that so let me get all three of those parts glued up together and i'll show you how they mount onto the lower part of the hull okay i've got the the pieces all glued together here the glasses plate here in the front is just fitted in it's not glued into place i just mounted it in there to show you guys how it'll fit in and I have also built up the radiator and fan assemblies here. And the reason, not really an interior on this, but this can be seen through the grates, so it's included inside the kit. 
Uh, there is a little square right here. There are only four parts in this too. That's why I didn't show it going together. Very simple, um, easy to put together. That little square will fit right over the other little piece here, which actually I can go ahead and glue that into place right now. And I've also got the other one to put on, on the other side there. And then we have our side pieces here. And the reason it's stacked like this is so that this lip this lip right here will be where the top of the uh, of the upper hull will fit in. And you also notice too, there's little tabs right here that correspond with the tab on that or the, the slot. And just like that, we can go ahead and glue it in and look at the fit. Look at the edge right here, it's just perfect all the way on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get both sides glued into place, get the radiators glued on as well as the glasses plate, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, while the hull is drawing into place, I'll show you the, the back part of the tank. Uh, we have our little bracketed shelf right here, which in the prototype was a little small, so we've increased the size of that to be the accurate size. That's gonna get glued in there. We've got this little stowage box that'll get placed in there. And then we have the exhaust, which I still have to do some sanding on them. I'm just kind of basically showing you how the parts will go together. We've got our shields that go over this part and finally this piece will go right up in here as well as I believe this is an antenna holder it will get mounted into place actually this goes a little bit further up just like this because I'm building the variant that has that so you're looking at all the parts how they're actually going to go onto the the back I'm going to finish sanding all of these things get them all glued into place and then I'll show you how it mounts to the back of the tank Okay, almost forgot too. I put the outer shrouds on the exhaust and keep in mind too, this little notch needs to be on the outside of each one of those covers. And all I have to do now is go ahead and glue this into place right up on the back here. Uh, there are two other pieces. I haven't cut off the sprue yet. And it's these two right here. This is part of the, the hull where the, the tow hooks will match up. And you'll see that they too have a notch in it and the notch will fit right inside here. So um, I'll cut those off, glue this back on and glue those into place. And then I will show you what the whole lower hull is starting to look like. So the rear plate has been glued on and now I can go ahead and glue the fenders into place here. They'll slide right into their little slots, right, um, kind of hard to see it on this one. Let me move this one over here and it's a little bit easier to see on that. You can see how they'll fit right up inside, just like that on the rear fender there. Moving to a top view now, I have our glasses plate here that will basically just pop into place here. Fits nice and tight and snug and very nicely actually. Uh, of course, we'll glue it on after we're done with that. And now I can show you how the uh, the top part of the hull will attach. Now I have attached a couple of quick parts, including these two funnel shape uh, or triangle sh funnel shape pieces. And what those are for is that when you look through the top here, you'll be able to see the radiators in there and I've also attached these grates here on the back which are movable if you want them to be. Let me slide this over here and this whole piece will just drop right into place. There are some tabs along the way here so it's a matter of basically just doing that and the whole thing kind of just locks into place. Now we also have our engine deck here and the engine deck you got to lift those grates up slide that on because there's a lip on the grates for holding the grates up and just like that you see how we've basically built majority of the lower hull now uh, i am not going to glue this on yet and the reason so is the instructions call out putting all of the accessories like the hatches all the other little parts on before you glue it into place i'm just going to leave it here i find it's easier to attach all those parts while it's actually part of the tank and also if there are any holes I need to drill from the bottom up, I will have access by popping this off and drilling through the bottom here, rather than deciding that, oh, I've glued it in place and now I can't figure out where exactly those holes are. So now that we're at this point, I'm going to go ahead and start attaching like all of the hatches and any of the other little pieces that they call out. And I'll do the final gluing once it's all done and I'm sure it's ready so we can move on to the turret after that. So let's put those parts on the upper hull. 
and here it is so i've gone through and made sure all the holes that i need to drill are drilled and that was for like the antenna mount as well as these mounts right here for the s mines also you can see i've made all of the hatches work and that way we can leave the clear parts out until it's time to paint so we'll just be able to open those up slide the clear parts in and we don't have to worry about masking them off or anything. Now, what I've started doing here is building the Fifel air cleaners here. I have to, uh, there's a little bit of a seam down the middle here that we have to take care of. And I started to glue the pipes on. And the way the pipes are attached, you can see here that there are like these little half circles in there. And that makes it so every time you put a new part on, it lines up the way it's exactly supposed to. And once I get that all built up, I can go ahead and attach them to the rear here. Uh, there are still some other pieces on here, tools, things like that, that I'm, I'm saving to the very, very end to attach. I want to do those last. So now I'm just going to continue to work on the Fifel air cleaners, and I'm going to show you how all that goes together right now. Here is the rear engine deck with the uh, the Fifel air cleaners on it. And uh, I assembled them obviously off camera and wanted to show you the easiest way I found to put them on. So when I attach this part here, I attached this piece and the out the two outer pieces basically and then attached the inner hose to the actual cleaner so as we mounted them you weren't trying to manipulate multiple items all at once because this was already in place and obviously I didn't want the the cement to totally set up in case there was a slight little variation and I had to move on one of them I had to just tweak it just ever so slightly and because the cement was still soft uh, I was able to do that I've also noticed you may notice is I've put the uh, the, the grates on on the back here or the uh, the the mesh over the grates and I'm going to show you that so I put those on first it is possible to get it on with the Fifel air cleaners it's just a lot easier so here are the other ones that need to go on and I will go ahead and glue those into place as well and put them on just like that and then we, there you can see there's a little bit of primer on that I went and primed over the whole area there just to see if there's any areas that I need to touch up on and I see a few little ones actually while we're looking on it but the primer really makes things like that stick out really well Okay, move the tank over to the side for a minute and show you some of the parts that make up the gun. And that is because I am now ready to do the actual turret. So we've got two halves of this that I've just started to glue together and I'm in the process of sanding down the, uh, the parting line there. This uh, aluminum part of the barrel will go inside that. There is a little notch here as well as a little notch inside there that line up that will make the barrel go like this. And finally, we have the muzzle brake. And like I said, all of these parts are being worked on right now to uh, to sand them down, get them ready for it. Uh, still early in the process of that. Then I have the inside of the, the gun, the breech area there. I just put these parts together, got to do a little cleanup and sanding on those as well. And then I'm going to show you basically how the whole thing will go together here. So this piece has been put in here temporarily. This will slide inside here. We have the inside like that. They're all fitted that they could only go in one way. And then we put the two little side pieces here. This is what makes the, the barrel actually go up and down as it would inside here. And then it's just a matter of stacking all of these pieces. So they're all notched. So that will slide inside there. This is notched in such a way that that'll go like that. So, wow, look at the size of that. So there is our 88 millimeter uh, gun. Granted, not fully sanded or not completed or anything, but I wanted to show you guys how it kind of goes together. And actually there is one other piece I left off here. This piece on the inside here, this is what mounts it to the actual inside of the, the turret itself so not going to glue any of these pieces together yet because we want to actually put it into the the turret so let me get these all finished up sanded and i'll show you how we start putting the actual turret together a quick little builder's tip too when you go to actually attach this portion of the the back of the gun there are four little tabs that are sticking up there. Actually, when I first looked at it, I thought they were part of the actual piece. Turns out they're actually just injection pin marks that you need to break off. You can kind of see where the little white area of the plastic, that's where I snipped them off right there. And that will make your item fit right into place exactly the way it's supposed to. So just remember to cut those little pieces off before you attach the back like this. Okay, I started working on the cupola and I noticed a, a little error here 
in what's called out here. So this little piece and this little piece are on the S sprue, but they are not S57. S57 is a different piece that was already used earlier in the build. The actual piece is S60. As you can see right here, F58 was or 57 was over here. It was a bigger piece. Uh, most of you should be able to find that. There was just an error in the way it was written on the instructions, but it is S60 that makes the actual top of the drum cupola open and close. Okay, I've put a few of the little sub assemblies together to kind of show you how quick and easy uh, the turret goes together. So once you've built all that time, because there's a lot of wheels and tracks and all the other parts for building the lower hull, uh, you'll find that the turret is very, very simple. So let me just show you the basics on it. Now I showed you how the gun went together earlier. It is going to basically drop right inside here, just like that, and it'll get glued into place, of course, and that'll pin it into place, just like that. And inside here, we have one other piece that needs to get glued in, and that is the commander seat, which will get glued just in just like that. And on the side here, we've got the pistol port that'll get glued in just like this. And there's a couple parts I've put together for the locking mechanism for the hatch here on the side. And if you glue it together properly, you will be able to open this up as well. Just like that, that'll be able to open. And of course, I'll get all that glued in there in a minute. And now, I'm gonna show you the parts for the top. Now, I've drilled the, the necessary holes. I have the extra antenna for the, uh, for the aerial on there. And also, I've put the, uh, the vision block in here. You also notice that there's blue on there, and that is because I put the uh, masking fluid on there. Once that gets on there, we can go ahead and put the guard that goes over it. And I've assembled the drum cupola and you see when you build it properly you can get it to open and close with that mechanism lots of little parts right there but nothing super difficult to put together that will get glued into place just like this we have our uh, smoke evacuator in there that has a little fan and stuff on now I've only put one of the wing nuts on but there's wing nuts that go all the way around that i just know that i'm going to end up knocking them off but i wanted to show you how they actually look on there i'll put them on closer to once i get all this glued together there is a notch in here that'll line up and just like that and we also have the one other hatch here that'll get glued in Oops, upside down there get glued in like that and it's a snap in type of hatch so when you snap it in to these little holes in here it should work as well and then of course once all the get that gets put together we can go ahead and glue the top on of this inside the in here yeah just like that and that little piece locks that into place yeah there it goes <laughs> Just like that. And then, of course, we have our stowage bin for the rear that'll get glued on just like this. And that is the majority of how the the upper hull goes together. There are a few other things that I will show you after I get all this sanded and glued together. But now that um, I've shown you how it goes together, I'm going to go ahead and assemble this off camera, come back and show you what it looks like. Here is the, uh, the side of the turret. And as you can see here, I've attached the smoke... Uh, smoke grenades on the side here and each one of these is an individual piece so you can adjust the angle a little bit right here they're still kind of setting up right now so I don't want to mess with them too much but you'll also notice too that I've put the uh, the spare track brackets on the side now I didn't put the in full entire bracket on yet and that is because I want to be able to paint this later on and then put the tracks on after I'm done painting it but I have a built up track here and I'll show you how this will go on here. I just put this together real quickly. So it'll slide into the bottom down there. And then we have this little clasp up on top here that comes down and kind of pins it into place on top here, which get my finger on it like that. And then it kind of locks it into place, which maybe it'll stay just like that. So it's very simple to put those on. It's just a matter of gluing those five pieces and the five bottoms. There is a little indent on the actual hull, or excuse me, on the side of the turret that will allow you to put those on in the right position and in the correct way. Uh, I guess you can leave the, uh, 
the track pin in if you want on that because they're not any of them hooked together and then it's just a matter of coming back later on and putting the clasp on top there or leaving even just the brackets i even thought about leaving some of the track off and maybe one of the brackets just in the down position but that's something we can think about later on so this is what the entire turret is going to look like all built up that uh, antenna is just placed in there give you a little quick little round there are two brackets for this side uh, five track brackets for this side and then of course I said all of the turret hatches open up on the vehicle just like that and I also did put all of the other wing nuts on the evacuator there there we go so now it's just a matter of going on to the hull putting the last little remaining parts on and showing you the final reveal. So I'll be right back to show you that. There you go, guys. Here is the uh, mostly complete Tiger One 16 scale build. And what I mean by mostly complete is just like I showed you on the turret, I've left off parts on it right now, just strictly for the ease of painting. Uh, you'll notice that there are no tools in place. There are no other the tow cables are in place. The track cable, now I did go along and put all of the brackets, or at least half of the brackets. The top of the bracket will get added later on, but I wanted to have all of those in place, but without putting the, the cables in there. Uh, it is just way, way easier to paint and decal and weather without those uh, those cables in the way. And that goes true, like I was just telling you with the, the tow cables, you can see the size of just the, uh, the eyelet here. But all that will get built and painted separately and then put on lastly in the next video because this video is going to strictly deal with the actual build it's obviously a special kit to me and i wanted to show you uh, without making it a three hour long video uh, the video right now is going to be about 35 minutes as it is uh, i want to show you as much of the build process as possible without making it too long and boring but this way you get to see what it looks like all built up we also have our figure up in the front here Give you an idea what he is going to look like and of course we can also put him in the cupola up here as well and that is why you want to have that seat in place because he can stand on that seat and show you like that and also before i show you a 360 around the vehicle here i want to also point out the suspension how the suspension is fully workable on the kit you can see all the torsion bars work also all of the tracks and wheels all rotate and of course you can have things going over just like that how it how it reacts like the real tank would on it there Well, there you go, guys. There is a look at how the new 16 scale Andy's Hobby Headquarters Tiger One Early goes together. Remember, I will be doing another video with the painting and weathering very, very soon. Also, keep in mind, too, this is the brand new Gecko Panzer II F. And I had actually started building this right here. Uh, and then this showed up and I had to kind of put this to the side. So there will be a build video coming out on the 16 scale Panzer II also very soon. 
So these kits are available for pre-order on our website, andyshq.com, if you still want to preserve one. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank you as always for watching, and please stay tuned because I have many more videos coming.